Today we're going to talk about the SR flip-flop circuit. Now before you watch this video, I recommend that you watch another video that I created entitled SR Latch Basic Introduction. And you could find it if you go to the YouTube search bar and type in SR Latch Organic Chemistry Tutor, it should come up. Now the SR flip-flop circuit is basically the SR latch circuit with two additional AND gates. You have the SR latch circuit with NOR gates, there's also the SR latch circuit with NAND gates. But to either of those, once you add two AND gates, as shown on the screen, you can make the SR flip-flop circuit. The main difference here is this additional input, sometimes called enabled or clock input. And this controls the circuit. The output is not going to change unless the input is active at the clock. If there's not a one at the clock input, the output is not going to change. And so this circuit has more control compared to the SR latch circuit. Now let's review some of the logic gates we're going to talk about in this circuit. We have the AND gate and the NOR gate. So remember, for the AND gate, in order to get an output of 1, both inputs have to be active. For the NOR gate, in order to get an output of 1, both inputs have to be inactive or in a low state. Now for the SR latch circuit, when S is active, we set Q to 1. When R is active, or when you hit the reset button, we reset Q to zero. So keep those things in mind as we go through this video. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to write up a truth table for the SR flip-flop circuit. So first we have our clock input and then the input of the SR flip-flop circuit, just S and R. And for the SR latch circuit, S prime and R prime. And then the outputs Q and Q bar. And then the description for that output. Now, the first thing we need to do is define the output states Q and Q bar. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to hit the reset button to the circuit to reset the circuit back to its original condition, in which case Q is going to be 0 and Q bar is going to be 1. So let's begin where the input at the clock is 0. If this is 0, it doesn't matter what S and R will be the output is not going to change. So if R is 0, 0 and 0 for an AND gate will give us an output of 0. If R is 1, 0 and 1 will still give the same output of 0 for R prime. And we could do the same thing for S. If S is 0, with a clock of 0, S prime is going to be 0. Or if S is 1, 0 and 1 will still give us an output of 0. So what this means is that whenever the input at the clock is 0, R prime and S prime will be 0, regardless of the values of R and S. So whatever the output is, it's not going to change whenever S prime and R prime is zero. Now let's put a one for the clock signal. And let's put a zero for S and R. So when R is zero and we have a one, at the 
at the clock input. For the AND gate, that will give us an output of zero. Now, S is zero as well, so S prime is going to be zero. So just to simplify things going forward, the values of S and R will become the values of S prime and R prime whenever we have a one at the clock input. Now, Q at this point is zero. So that's going to follow the input to the bottom NOR gate. And two zeros for NOR gate will give us a one. So Q bar is one, which means this input is one. Zero and one for a NOR gate will give us an output of zero, which Q is zero. So as we can see, when S prime and R prime is zero, there's going to be no change at the output. So whatever the output was, it's the new output will be the same thing. So whenever we have no change in the output, even if we change the input, then in this case we could say that the circuit has memory at this point, or is in a state of memory. So if I write memory on no change, it means the same thing. Now let's change the output by setting Q to 1. So we're going to activate the set button with an active clock signal. So S is going to be 1, R is going to be 0. Now as mentioned before, the values of S and R will become the values of S prime and R prime. So this is going to be 1 and this is going to be 0. And we can see why that's the case. So when S is 0 and we have a, a 1 for the clock input, a 0 and 1 for the AND gate will be 0. So S bar, I did that wrong. S is 1. So 1 and 1 for the AND gate will be 1. So S bar is 1 which we can see that here. R is 0. 0 and 1 for an AND gate will give us an output of 0. So whenever we have an input of 1 at the clock, we can see S and S prime will be the same, and R and R prime will be the same. Now Q is 0 right now. So this input will be 0. So we have a 0 and 1 at the NOR gate. That will give us an output of 0. So Q bar is currently 0. This flows to the input of the top NOR gate. Two zeros for NOR gate will give us an output of 1. So that's going to change Q from 0 to 1. So by hitting the set button, we set Q to 1, and Q bar is going to flip to 0. Q and Q bar, they should be opposite values of each other. So Q is now 1, Q bar is 0. So for the description, we're going to say we've set it Q, or we set Q to 1. Now at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to hit the reset button. So S is going to be 0, R is going to be 1. And the values of S and R will become the values of S prime and R prime. So we have a 0 for R, 1 for the clock. 0 and 1 will give us an output of 0 for R prime. I keep doing that wrong. I meant to say we have a 0 for S. So S prime is 0. We have a 1 for R. A 1 and a 1 with the AND circuit will give us an output of 1. So R prime is 1. I got to watch out for mistakes. 
Now, Q is currently 1, so this input will be 1. A 1 and a 0 for the NOR gate will give us an output of 0. So Q bar is 0. A 1 and a 0 for the NOR gate will change Q to 0. It's 1, but it's going to flip back to 0. Now that Q is 0, this is going to change the input at the bottom NOR gate. So we have two zeros at this NOR gate. Two zeros will give a 1 as the output. So Q bar is going to go back to 1. So by hitting the reset button, we reset Q back to 0. Now let's fill this in in the table. But let me clear the board real quick. So now Q went back to 0 and Q bar returned to 1. So we've resetted Q to 0. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit both the set and the reset buttons. So the values of S and R will become S prime and R prime. So we have a 1 for R. A 1 and a 1 for the AND gate will give us an output of 1. And we also have a 1 for S, which will give us an output of 1 at S prime. Now Q is 0 at this point. So 0 and 1 for the NOR gate will give us an output of 0. So Q bar is going to change from 1 to 0. So now we have a 0 here, a 1 and a 0 for the NOR gate, or 0 and 1 will give us an output of 0. So note that Q and Q bar, they're both 0 when we hit both the set and reset buttons at the same time with an active clock signal. But that's a problem though. By definition, Q should not be equal to Q bar. If Q is 0, Q bar should be 1. If Q is 1, Q bar should be 0. They shouldn't be the same. But under these conditions, they are the same. Therefore, we define this as an invalid condition, or we simply say that this situation is not allowed. But if you have two LEDs connected at the output of the circuit, what's going to happen is both LEDs will be off. But it just doesn't fit this definition, so this is considered an invalid condition. So that's the basic operation behind the SR flip-flap. So remember, in order for the output to change, you need an active clock signal. The clock input has to be high in order for it to change. If you have a zero at the input of the clock, or at the clock input, regardless of what S and R will be, S prime and R prime will be zero, and so there will be no change in the output. Whatever the output is at that instant in time, it's going to remain that way, regardless of what happens to S and R. So that's it for this video. Hopefully it gave you a good idea of how the SR flip-flop circuit works.